Hey, it's good to see you again. I'm Alfred, welcome back to Morrowind. I rejiggered the schedule a little bit because you know what, I really wanted to get this out. I really wanted to play this game. I really wanted to see people see me beat it. So... Oh god. So yeah, there's this big whirling, swirling, um, you know, spurt of lava here because we are at the heart of a volcano. Of course, everyone knows that lava doesn't hurt you unless you touch it. Speaking of, let me just get to the other side here. So, of note, uh, Skyrim's final dungeon also ends with a large, swirling, circular vortex. Uh, specifically one that leads to... Uh, one that leads to Sovngarde. the days, man. Yep. Jeremy's soul blowing me out right now. This is the perfect time to start swelling up Narabar Rising. Oh god. There's something I can sip here. Get some jump potion. Icing force. Perfect. Thank you. Whoever I stole that from. Oh yeah, I also like how on the map it is bright, boiling lava red, you know? It's like the inside of a lasagna. Bright red and impossibly hot. Now we are heading out of this, but because I wanted to take a peek at the outside here. So... Yeah, this old Dwemer statue. Another one of these survived. You might think that it would be destroyed being so close to possibly the shittiest place in all of Morrowind. And god, this country's kind of a shithole to begin with, but I digress. God, look at that as well. It looks like the sky is about an inch from my face. So you're supposed to take this long, circuitous, spiraling path in, but, you know. And, like, I know that a lot of it is asset reuse, but that path reminds me of the path we took to get up to Azura. And this area reminds me very strongly of the very first, like, puzzle hyphen dungeon we did, where we had to get that guy's, like, Dwemer cog or whatever the hell he wanted like all the way back in episode one like episode a uh, single where we had to like uncork the thing and get back in here pretty quick and again we can see it's the same kind of puzzle but I also just want to look around because this is a cool looking area Oh, it's the shield. I, I can see something when I look down and spin the camera like that. It's my shield poking into my frame of view. Which makes sense because it is pretty goddamn huge. Steaming lava vent. Does that do anything? Steaming lava vent large. Am I supposed to be able to see those? One moment. I couldn't find anything about these giant, ridiculous, hilarious steam vents. However, um... Uh, I was reminded of a certain thing. The other ash vampires that are named Dagoth something... Um... Whoops. I don't know why I went back out. I think I just wanted to see what happened. Uh, hello? Oh, right, I asked said, Jesus. Now, we're there for a second. Uh, let's make a safety save.
The other vampires that are all named Dagoth something all drop. Uh, I have a few of them on me. Yeah, heart fire, heart heal, heart rhyme. These are all heart something because they're heart whites bound Wonder to the heart. Our friend or traitor, come. Come and look upon the heart and a Kulakan. And bring Wraithguard. I have need of it. We'll talk about that in one second. There was a mechanic wherein you were supposed to be able to kill the various guys leading up to Dagothor, all the named Dagoths, and it would weaken Dagothor. That was cut because it is too difficult to implement, or it might not be implemented properly, but suffice to say, all of these things will end up giving us a lot of help against a certain Dagothor in here. Now let me turn this back up and let's listen to the man again. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Come and look upon the heart and a Kulakan. And bring Wraithguard. I have need of it. That's our villain. He's so... mild-mannered. He is quaint. He's pleasant. He's conversational. Sorry. He's, he's, he's conversational. He is just like... Oh, hello. But um, he calls us Nerevar, and has called us Nerevar since... Almost since before we even knew that we could be Nerevar. Um, he's been right there with us, and that's why Dagoth Ur is so fascinating to me. In the same way that Vivek treats us as an equal, so too does Dagoth Ur. Because Dagoth Ur and Nerevar were very, very good friends. Come to the heart chamber. I wait for you there where we last met countless ages ago. So this is such a wonderful... And we have a dead adventurer. He had just some miscellaneous crap on him. No wonder why he failed, but boy, he got really far, huh? So yeah, I would also almost like this part better if there were no enemies. Just take out the Vonner, by the way. Just you and the man himself, man of the hour, just talking to you. Like, I've missed you. Come find me, you know? Because again, Dagoth Ur is so strangely conversational. Come to me through fire and war. I welcome you. He welcomes us. He's not... It's not like Alduin, where, like, he just like, blah, blah, blah. Or like, Dagon, or more like Ball. Where as a villain, they are just this, like, vile blight on the world who just want to destroy. And ironically, Dagoth Orr is literally using something called the Blight, but he's not a dick about it. Yes, he's a little racist, but God, everyone is in Morrowind. Um, and so, yeah, he's just very strangely conversational about it. I don't know why, but that amuses me and probably always will. Welcome, Moon and Star. I have prepared a place for you. And yeah, she calls us Moon and Star, our, our old title. And he's prepared a place for us. He's got it all ready for us, you know? Okay. 
it's a it's a possibly unique rare named item. Who knows, you know? Come. Bring Wraith Guard to the heart chamber. Together let us free the curse of false gods. So interestingly enough, he's agreeing with the Ashlanders there. Freeing the cursed false gods. Welcome, Nerevar. Together we shall speak for the law and the land and shall drive the mongrel dogs of the Empire from Morrowind. You can hear a little bit of modulation in his voice there, implying that he might not be the same as he once was. Or maybe they wanted to make him sound scarier. In my opinion, Dagoth Ur is at his best when he is just very, very human. Is this how you honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned? Come to me openly and not by stealth. I'm working on it, dude. Dagoth Gilvoth. Another dead hero. That one had a Daedric short sword, though. Oh, the Chiding Quirks. I was actually looking for a copy of that. The Savior's Hide is better, though. But yes, his voice is fascinating. And it's one of the many things that just entrances me about Dagoth Or. He is pleasant to the Nerevery. Whereas, like, you'd expect a villain's relationship with their hero to just be, like, screaming at each other or swearing. Like, they hate each other, you know? But Dagoth or harbors no ill will whatsoever for the Nerevarine. There he is. And here's Welcome the... Moon and Star to this place where destiny is made. Bungie headquarters? So here's the craziest part. He's not attacking us. Let me actually... I'm gonna take a picture of this for my wife. And yeah, he just sits here, poses, and chuckles. It began here, it will end here. Have you any parting words? Or would you prefer to skip the speeches and get to our business? You are the challenger, after all. And so to you goes the courtesy of the first blow. This is accurate. He is not supposed to attack you first. Sometimes he will, but I think that's a bug. Now that you have come here to me, there can be but one result. Many times I've considered offering to share this place with you. I consider offering to accept your oath of service. You might try to buy my trust by giving me Wraithguard King and Sender. I thought we might once again be friends, comrades, brothers in arms, lovers. I had that part in. But I have won this place in power by right of conquest. By right of daring and enterprise, I will not risk it to cunning and deceit. I offer you no deals. If you are my enemy, I cannot trust you. And even if you are not my enemy, I cannot let you live. It will all be decided here. I believe I will prevail, but I cannot be sure. And I'm vain enough that, should I fall, I would wish to be remembered in my own words. What an what a interesting thing for a villain to say, you know? Remember me how I was. Um, so yeah. So if you have any final questions you would ask, ask them now. I have final ash, uh, questions I would ask you if you would answer. This is one of my favorite parts in the game. Not just because we get to speak to Dagoth Ur and Dagoth Ur is great, but we get to characterize our, our creator character. My first question is this. Are you really Nerevar Reborn? You are free to answer this yourself. You say what you want to say. It is up to you and I love anything like that in any game with a creative character. Any game where you get to project a little more onto yourself is so cool. Um, it lets you really get into the character. It's a choice. So our options, in case you're on mobile and can't read the tiny text, our options are, by the grace of gods and fate, I am Nerevar Reborn. I'm a loyal servant of the Emperor. Only simps pick that. I'm a self-willed hero and I make my own fate, or I know more, no more than you do. But I am Nerevar. That is bitter. The gods and fate are cool. I served you faithfully once, Nerevar, and you repaid me with debt. Death. 
I hope this time it will be you who pays for your faithfulness. So he's slipped. He's just been here talking to himself, deluding himself for eons. My second question is, if you win, what do you plan to do with the power from the heart? Will you make yourself a god and establish a thearchy? Or will you complete a Kulikon and dispute Tamriel with the Septums? Or share the heart with your followers of I have and breed a new race of divine immortals? I have my own secret plan for the heart. Well, perhaps they may be surprises in store for me yet. Or perhaps you obscure your plans on principle. Or perhaps you're an instinctive bluffer. No matter. My final question is this. If I had offered to let you join me, would you have surrendered Wraithguard, Keening, and Sunder to me to seal your oath? No, I would never join you. No, I would never surrender the tools. Those are very different. Like, join me if you give me the tools. No, I would never join you is fuck you. No, I would not surrender the tools is not the same thing as no, I would never join you. And you should think a lot about the difference between them. Not that it won't make this boss fight happen, because, as I mentioned, that secret quest line was cut from the game. But. And then the other options are, yes, perhaps with the right guarantees, or yes, if I had a cunning plan. Since it hardly matters, let me assure you, there are no guarantees that would help you once I had my, had my hands on those tools. Pity I didn't try to bargain with you. It might have made things so much easier but now if you have any questions ask them otherwise you are the challenger i await your first blow you can quit it or ask questions what are your questions what's your plan for the heart i will continue to draw divine power from the heart and distribute to my kin and followers i will broadcast to divine power upon the blight winds so it'll touch each soul on vardenfell and then more broadly across the waters to the rest of morrowind and tamriel Recall that Morrowind is actually a much larger province than just this island. The island that we're on is just called Vardenfell, and it's made up of mainland Vardenfell and the Escadian Isles, um, along with some other things like the rocks off the shore of the Bitter Coast that some people consider islands, and I don't really think they are, as same deal with Azura's Coast. Um, and then mainland Morrowind is the part of Morrowind that actually touches Tamriel. And Tamriel is the continent that Cyrodiil, Skyrim, Daggerfall, etc. are all in. Um, and... Sorry, I'm trying to think, but nothing's happening. Uh, and then Soul's Time is also a part of Morrowind. So Morrowind, uh, oddly enough, has a tribunal of its own. Vardenfell, Soul's Time, and mainland Morrowind. But yes, just Vardenfell is the area that the game called Morrowind takes place. But... In terms of, like, tax paying, Morrowind is mainland Morrowind and Soul's Time. Little gerrymandering, you know? Um, in time, every mortal in Tamriel will feel the libering, liberating contact with the divine. What are your questions? Plan for the Sixth House. The Sixth House will serve as the elite cadre of our movement. As cultists evolve through various stages of enlightenment... So again, um, I wanted to mention this, and it's pretty obvious as we're reading this, but Dagoth Ur considers Blight a gift. It's divinity. It's the divine disease. It is from the heart of Lorcan. It just, you know, it's not good for you. Um, and he refers to the awful twisting mutations your body goes through as you change and shift in fucking <laughs> uh, Blight sickness. He considers that enlightenment. Anyway, as the cultists evolve through various stages of enlightenment, they will become, as suits their abilities, either holy warriors or priests. So, whatever you're better at, that's what you be. Kind of nice. Um, their duty is to prepare themselves for service. Their joy and liberation is to enter ever more deeply into the profound enlightenment of the divine dream world. Plan for the Dunmer. I will free the Dunmer from the imperial yoke and cast down the false gods of the temple. I will lead them out of their ancient superstitions and gift them with intimate knowledge of the divine. Then perhaps when Morrowind is once again restored to its ancient glories, it will be time to consider whether the Den Dunmer should cultivate ambitions of empire. So like, yeah, 
He's got a really complex plan here. How do you justify your crimes? If by my crimes you need the inevitable suffering and destruction caused by war, then I accept the burden of leadership. He's got a point. Like, he does really have a point here. We could argue that this is all Kaganrak's fault. But really, if we burn it all the way down to the very beginning, it's Lorcan's fault for having his heart ripped out and thrown at this fucking mountain. And before that, for building this stupid world where everyone can have free will. What an idiot. The Sixth House cannot be restored without war. Enlightenment cannot grow without risk of upsetting the tradition-bound and complacent herd. And the mongrel armies of the Empire cannot be repelled from Morrowind without bloodshed. As I have charity and compassion, I grieve, but our mission is just and noble. So again, most people don't count online Daggerfall, you know, the other games, as Elder Scrolls games. I argue that that's kind of silly, but they see Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim as a little trilogy. Much like with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Persona, the first two things may as well not have fucking happened. Um, actually, Persona and Mainline Shin Megami Tensei. But I digress. Um, and again, I compare Dagoth Ur to Merun's Dagon of Oblivion and Alduin of Skyrim. Both of them are very resolutely chaotic evil. I'm not entirely sure Dagoth Ur is even evil. He's definitely lawful something. And it's really weird that this is where we lie. And it's why I think a lot more people come back to Morrowind than come back to Oblivion or Skyrim. And possibly for different reasons they come back to Morrowind and Skyrim. Or Morrowind rather than Oblivion and Skyrim. Because, um, like, for Oblivion, you have possibly a more busted magic system than this game, though not as busted of an alchemy system. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what my friends have told me. Um, and in Skyrim, you have the most current engine running uh, and the most popular game in the franchise, so you'll always be sure to have a lot of mods to play and things to talk about with people. But with this, there's a level of nuance to the writing that really isn't granted to the other games. And maybe this is just my fanboyism of Morrowind. Um, but I will say, this is something that does not get across to me. And I feel like part of that is the fact that they wrote the dialogue with intent for it to be read, rather than writing the dialogue with intent to read it. It is a huge, huge fucking problem in Oblivion. But in Oblivion, the voice actors were given their lines alphabetically. So, ah, my leg is being chewed off by a Daedra, follows immediately after, ah, good morning, how are you today? For every single fucking voice actor and every single voice line. And voice direction was non-existent. And even if that weren't the case, there's a lot of glitches involving the voice acting. I say glitches, but they're just honest-to-God fuck-ups. There's a line in game where someone's like, how are you- oh, sorry, let me take that again. <clears throat> how are you doing? And, like, she says that whole thing in the game world. And it's so... It's, it's the issue of um, having voice acting versus not. Obviously, Skyrim is more easy to enjoy because people say things to you. I'm dyslexic and my wife has auditory processing disorder. It is nicer for us to have fucking goddamn voice acting so people can say things to us. And it is legitimately hurting my eyes to read all of this fucking text. But it is healing my soul. Also, does he have a little mask on his belt here? Right above his divine crotch? Anyway, what happened to the Dwemer? Sorry, let me finish that. So yeah, Dagoth Ur is very interesting. And honestly, if there was less evolution between the games, I feel like it would be easier to compare them. But that's a whole other thing. I have no idea what happened to the Dwemer. I have been denied the opportunity to study Wraithguard, and I'm not sure how much of Kaganrak's lore was invested in his tools, and how much in his own sorcery and mastery. I have long studied Kaganrak and come to admire his wisdom and craft. Someday, after the campaigns of the Sixth House are secure, I hope I have time to dedicate to this mystery. Why are you building a Kulikon? By the way, can we just talk about... Again, for most games, a boss fight would be like... 
you see each other and you throw down. Think about how, how little fanfare is given to any Dark Souls boss fight. You walk into a room that contains a boss, the boss sees you, the fight starts, and goes until one of you dies. And then for a game with more story, you have a little banter beforehand, but usually it's not more than a minute. We are... Look at how much we've just been speaking to each other. We're not yelling, we're talking. It's so unique and fascinating. It's why I fucking love this game. It's so weird. What else is like this? Akulakan will serve three purposes. First, it'll be the champion of my army, liberating first Vardenfeld and Morrowind, and then perhaps the rest of Tamriel. He seems to stop at Tamriel in most of his plans. There are other continents. Yokuda, Atmora. Um, like... He doesn't have to stop at Tamriel. He just seems content with that, though. He doesn't want world domination. He just wants to make sure that if someone wants to come fuck with him, they need to get on a boat to do it. Second, it will serve as a sower and cultivator of the divine substance derived from the heart. Three, it will... Oh, that's weird. He goes first, second, and three, not third. That's probably a typo. It will serve as the prominent banner and symbol of our cause to defy the Empire, to liberate mortals from ancient superstitions, and to glorify our crusade against the gods. So fucking cool. Um, I want to see where Numidium is right now. I'm just Googling this. Uh, destroyed at... Numidium was destroyed and the remains were scattered across Tamriel. So we don't know where the hell Numidium even is. It's all over the goddamn place. Um, they try to rebuild it. Oh, Iliac Bay. That's where Daggerfall takes place. Yeah, okay. That's fine by me. And then, uh... This is another m minor thing, but um, Vivek claims that the Dwemer built Numidium to look like him, which is so fucking full of himself. So reality is kind of held together by these things called towers. Um, and the towers are usually named after a metal or stone. Uh, I've got a list of them open now. Adamanti is the Adamantine Tower. Um, and it's sometimes called Tower Zero or the Ur Tower. Uh, and I believe it is... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've been talking a lot. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, it's like in a big seat of the empire. I think it might be in Cyrodiil, but I haven't played Oblivion. Red Tower is this. It's Dagoth Or, it's the mountain. And partly it's the tower just because it's a big, important, powerful volcano, and partly it's the tower because it contains the heart. White gold. Oh, white gold is the one I'm thinking of. White gold is the one that's in Oblivion. Um but it looks like the Adamantine Tower. It's built to, like, oppose and reflect it. The Crystal Tower is one that's named Crystal Like Law, which is so cool. Snowthroat is the throat of the world from Skyrim. And yes, it's a tower. And, like, of course, naturally. Uh, Greensap is the Bosmer Tower, and it's just a big fucking tree. Orchalk is the Orchalcum Tower. Um, it hasn't appeared in a game, but it's, you know, presumably the orc thing. And then Walk Brass is the Brass Tower or Brass God, a.k.a. the Numidium. Um, and this is one of the only times that someone has tried to rebuild a tower. Uh, and then there's a thing called the Coral Tower that was stolen by the Daedra. But anyway, yes. Um, one thing that's very interesting about Morrowind is that two towers exist very close to one another, and it's kind of why there's such a big fucking deal. But yes, towers can be destroyed, and it makes reality go a little weird. And if all of the towers are destroyed, it's assumed that reality will fall apart. And that is actually what the Aldmeri Dominion, the high elf Nazis in Skyrim, 
that's what they're actually trying to do. They're trying to unmake the world so they can make it for elf supremacy because they think that their ancestors are the gods and they're the true race and yada, 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 yada. Same fucking deal. Um, but yes, they want to ban worship of things they don't like, like Daedra, the Tribunal, or Talos, because they just want to pair it back to the original eight, because they think that those are their ancestors, and Talos is verifiably not a fucking elf. Um, and then they want to destroy all the towers, and Brass Tower has been destroyed, and undestroyed and redestroyed a couple of times now. And an attempt to build a second one didn't get off the ground. Red Mountain, the Red Tower, is destroyed a couple of years after this game. Minor spoilers, but remember that giant rock that's being held in the air by Vivek's powers? Yeah, what happens when Vivek's powers go away, like we're about to do? It's been discussed that we may have to cut the source of those powers off. And if I'm given the choice, I will absolutely destabilize all of Vivek's power. What happens to that big rock that's being held in the sky? Well, the volcano has a little rock lunch. That's what happens. Anyway. Uh, three, it will serve as the prominent banner and symbol of our cause. To defy the Empire, to liberate mortals from ancient superstition, and to glorify our crusade against the gods. Um, that's everything. I'm finished talking. Defend yourself. Very well. If you are impatient to begin, go ahead. You're the challenger, and to you goes the first blow. So he's proper tough, as we can see. Oh, it actually works. That's kind of funny. All right, pardon me, sir. Let's get Adelon's ward. Let's get that going. And look at how he walks. He kind of lopes, you know? So yeah, there isn't actually as such a mechanic. Wow. Oh yeah, we're kind of invisible because of the, the stuff that we have on, huh? So there isn't actually a mechanic for um, us to actually weaken Dagoth or, and he's not that hard of a boss to begin with. Worth noting, he does not die, he vanishes. Kulakan's chamber. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. So yeah, I believe now teleportation magic straight up does not work here. So we can see this is a Kula Khan. And wow, they're really getting in there, huh? So using levitation, we can actually trick Dagoth Thor into falling off the side of this. And... He's being built with actual bones. What that means and why is very unclear. And we can see again that Dagoth Ori is just crackling with the power of the heart. And in fact... Oh god. So that's not meant to happen, but it can. Let's take a look around, huh? Yep. He's got an actual ribcage, spine, and bones within him for some reason. And yeah, we can see Dig out through a tweaking out down here. Yeah, using levitation or tricks like that, it's possible to just get Dagoth here to fall the hell off. 
And you may have noticed we were not actually hurting him. Like, you can see that... You can see his health bar. He's standing in knee-deep lava. He's fine. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can Just, you kill a god? The way that he's what like... A grand and intoxicating oh, what a innocence. I'm a How could you god. be so naive? There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. God, what a good fucking character. And yeah, you can kind of see that um, Akula Khan still kind of has... Uh, the... That guy got it hard. You can see that it still has a lot of the Dw uh, Dwemer um, design influences on it. It doesn't really look like a Dunmer thing, I would argue. But it's not made as shiny. Um, I want to play Dire. Anything to not play Oblivion, right guys? But you may have seen, what goes in a rib cage if not a heart? What goes in the chest of a god, if not a heart? Do we know of any godly hearts around here? I got this bucket here. Don't know what that's for, but don't even want to ask. And yeah, they're just like trying to like just fucking hammer shit into this thing. God, how fucking cool is that? Right, right. Let's go pound on him with some weapons. So you can see, we're not getting through him at all. But we know what to do with this thing. And look, it's not actually put into the chest the way that it's supposed to be. It's being vented with a couple of pipes. And it's labeled a Kulakon and the Heart of Lorcon. Look at that, isn't that fucking neat? So, y'all remember how to do this? You strike it once with Sunder, and then once with Keening, and then soak in the juice. But if you hit it more than once with Keening, some bad stuff happens. What are you doing? What are you doing? Fool! Stop! This is the end. The bitter, bitter end. So again, Dagoth Ur does not die there. When we strike the heart of Lorcan enough, it just kind of starts to spin into nothingness and goes into nothing. And then when we finish off Dagoth Ur after cutting off his divinity, he doesn't really die so much as he just stops. You can see a very big jump there because the game is like, oh shit, because this sort of thing is very hard, but yeah, Akula Khan is disintegrating. I found Dagoth Thor and spoke with him. He asked me questions and let me answer questions in return. And when all the questions had been answered, there was nothing left to say. The time for words has passed. Now only deeds can resolve this matter between Dagoth Thor and I. I found the heart of Lorcan within the giant artifact of Kulakan. I struck it with Sunder, and then struck it again and again with Keening until the enchantment was destroyed. Severed from the sustaining power of the heart, Dagoth Ur was destroyed. But the disturbance triggered an earthquake, and I had to flee for my life. So. A uh, little bit of a jump there, but it's supposed to be like, the second you get off that uh, bridge... Like, the second you step on the bridge, it's, to, it's supposed to start shaking and then, like, just start dissolving and fall apart and stuff like that. 
It's obviously very hard to do that, considering the era. Um, this kind of scripted effect would get a lot more elaborate and well done. Look at that, they even got the little scaffolding. That's very good. Good job, guys. OSHA might be happy with that. Probably not, though. Um, I really like that, that scripting, though. It's very simple and short and gets the point across. We've destroyed the heart of Akula Khan. What does that mean for the rest of it? Well, it disintegrates like a... You know, like a poorly made pile of trash can nachos. It just falls apart piece by piece, and it looks really cool. Can we use recall yet? We can. So, yeah. A good fucking game. So yes, we can use teleport, uh, not teleport, you can use teleport, but you can use jump or slow fall to get around there. Um, if Dagoth or does not chase you to the heart, he'll teleport there. And then I really, really love... Holy shit, there's a thing that I've missed. Oh my god. How could I have possibly missed this? What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a yep. god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? There is no escape. Bomb. No recall. See, see you teleport to work this I love this line, by the way. Um, Listen to this. Lay down you do? your weapon. What are you doing? It's not too Fool. late for my murder. Stop. This is the end. Bitter. Bitter. Just the way he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop, fool. Sorry, a little loud there. Just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No! Just the, the the way that he has this fucking breakdown is so, so cool. And then, yeah, we got to see the destruction of Numidium again. So, they call this thing Anumidium in Coda, I believe. Which is a pun on a new Midium. But also, I believe it's a combination of Akulakan and Numidium. Alright. So, yeah, last time I did this, um, I teleported out of here. <laughs> uh, I just, while I was looking at the wiki to see if there was anything I was missing, boy, was there. Take our big heroic walk out of this place. There she is. You no longer bear the burden of prophecy. You have achieved your destiny. You are free. The doom Duima's folly, Lord Dagoth's temptation, the tribunal's seduction, the god's heart freed, the prophecy fulfilled. All fate sealed and sins redeemed. If you have pity, mourn the lost, but let the weeping cease. The blight is gone, and the sun's golden honey gilds the land. Hail, Savior, Hortator, and Nereverin. Your people look to you for protection. Monster and villains, great and small, still threaten the people of Vardenfell. Enemies and evils abound, Yet indomitable will might rid Morrowind of all its ills. For you, our thanks and blessing, our gift and token given. Come, take this thing from the hand of God. Alright. Also, I love how shitty <laughs> the fucking things are. And yeah, this is her. Azura. The Ring of Azura.
and now we can just take our victory lap on out. This is how it should be, and I much and I prefer this as well. Like being able to walk out of here and it's like just totally empty because who is even alive in here to like who who even could be alive in here to fight you? But properly speaking, we've just cured the blight. Because it's not truly a disease in the sense that it, you know, it is an organism into and of itself and it replicates within the bodies of someone else. It has an origin. It's a guy. And the guy responsible for it, again, well, you're not supposed to be here. I guess it makes sense considering that your body was destroyed by the blight, but there's no reason that you would just start being... Now, you really should have been here. That's lore unfriendly. I got the Irving. Get club. Oh, shit. I've got to fortify strength, don't I? Because I'm thinking it'd be a good time to use it. Fortify speed, fortify int, fortify physique, agility. What is it, boy? I just killed a god. He flicked his tail like he was like, oh, good job. Fortify speed, endurance. I'm sure this is very exciting. Alright, let me just check the wiki and see. Alright. All right, cool. Yeah, we're done in here. So yeah, um, any true ash vampire is now dead. They just kind of die wherever they are. Uh, which is good for us. Let's leave this one down. It's a one-handed weapon. And you can see a lot of people are for real, real liking us now. Excuse me, you're the Reverine, and I don't really know how to talk to important folk like you except to say thank you for everything. You're goddamn right. I really love the feeling of beating it. <laughs> Just give me home, sir. Thank you. I really love the feeling of beating in Elder Scrolls. Like, the end of Skyrim where all of the dragons just recognize you as a badass and a dragon. It's so cool. Very validating. All right. Where's my good, my goodies? Well, first, let's restore this to its place. What am I wearing here? Kuras of the Savior's Hide. Stolen from a wizard. Bull. Bonky. Um. Yeah, I could just leave Sunder and Keening here. Here we go. Uh. 
Oh yeah, let's drop my stuff off as well. I keep hitting E to open the inventory because that's the button for it in Minecraft. Because I've been doing nothing but playing Minecraft. See, it's a good vibe, but... Oh, shit. I need Sunder to not kill me. <laughs> right, let's leave that on the floor there, I guess. These, these need a better place of power. Can I put it here? I can. Sunder and Keening. And then... Let's see if next to them we can't put our good friend... Oh yeah, the Tavani Helm as well. Wraithgar. I mean, let's be honest, that thing's kind of the Infinity Gauntlet. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Let's drop all of these in here. We've done it, huh? This thing is okay, but it doesn't really fit with my aesthetic. Did I not get a gold, uh, glass helmet? Guess the guy didn't have one, huh? how that looks being tucked in down there one of these things fortifies speed I should probably keep it man look at all that oh it feels really good to get here. It feels really, really good to beat this fucking game. Like, I love this game. It's not that I'm happy to be finished with it, but like... What a good fucking game, though. Alright. Um, first stop, let's head back up to Aldrin and pick up the things that I left on the floor there. Because I will miss them dearly. That's not the right thing. I activated my secret thong powers. It's kind of wild how my character has become a master mage. Even though I have no ranks in magic and no magical skills tagged. Just because there's so many fucking magical items and scrolls in this, in this province. Give me back to Aldrin. Thank you. Oh yeah, while we're here, let's go talk about our uh, our stronghold. The new mace. What is this? Oh, it's a mace enchanted with the mace spell. That's kind of weird. So, demon, there we go. So, what happens if we cast this? We get this mace. Which is different from... Oh, this is an ebony spiked mace. The bound of mace summons a daedric one. I guess that makes a little sense. What's up, fuckers? Uh, can you buy these shirts off of me? Thank you. Also, yeah, now I am just free to sell off any of these ancient, super powerful things. There's no real reason to use them. I mean, Sunder and Keening are pretty good weapons as they go, but you have to wear the Wraith Guard to equip them at all. 
stay as long as you like, friend. It would be a privilege to talk with you. I really, I really love the feeling of respect that I get from the people here. I do not get that in Skyrim, except for in Solstheim. <laughs> Yes, Glinda Pitchplan, I want you to make sure your stronghold is being built on schedule. Go to it, which is built along the Rows of Stones, the Bal Isra, on the east side of the road from Aldrin to Mangar. Speak of the foreman, I will mark it on your map. Three blessings. You know, I I'll come back and do this off camera. Because what we're doing now, we're going to go talk to Vivek. And we're going to see what that bastard has to say about these things. Maybe I'll kill him. Why walk? <laughs> I run this shit now. You fools. God, my character's so fucking cool. What's up, pussy? The blight is gone and we have survived. We must dedicate ourselves to rebuilding the temple, and you must dedicate yourself to your responsibility as the protector of Morrowind. Much to do. You still have Kaganrak's tools, potent weapons, and the wit and experience of a proven hero. The tribunal and the temple are happy to yield to you the duties of fighting the enemies of Morrowind. Many blighted beasts and horrors that have survived and must be hunted down and destroyed. Lesser monsters and villains of all kind who prey among the people. Unsolved mysteries and legendary treasures undiscovered. I'm sure you'll find much to occupy you. This is Michael Kirkbride saying, hey, play more of the game. We have lost the divine powers, but not altogether. Some token of the people's faith remains, and we shall dedicate it to rebuilding the temple. Now that Dagoth Ur is gone, we can turn our energies to the more humble needs of the people. It's good, honest work, and I re believe there is redemption in it. He was a god, and now is dead, if one can truly kill a god. You want to find out? The issue to be resolved between the temple and the distant priests. And now our greatest enemy is gone, we must reorganize the temple to meet the needs of the people. We have less needs of ordinators, for example, and greater needs of priests and healers and teachers. We must find time to mourn and honor the dead. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Am Alexius of the Selenide gained their divine powers from the heart of Lorcan. And now we no longer have access to the heart, so we must lose our divinity. I have always worn my divinity lightly. Fundamentally, I am not at all a serious person, and I will not miss it. I have tried to do what was necessary. I am afraid I have done some harm. I assure you, I will be quite content to be a mere mortal again, dedicated to my own amusements. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. You're welcome. Wait. Let's save. Like, when I beat Omori, I was just heartbroken and crushed beyond any recognition, but like, oh, I'm so pleased to have beaten this game. Oh, I love this fucking game. Um, thank you all for coming here and sitting through, what is it, 26 episodes of this fucking game? Not counting the episodes that, uh, I read the 36 Lessons of Vivek, which I didn't technically order. But like, holy mackerel, y'all. We really, really, we really did it. I really did it. More God Slaying awaits us in the DLCs. I will do both of them. I will complete the Stronghold. I will rebuild Raven Rock. I will do both main quests of both DLCs. And I will kill... What's his name? Karstag? Um, and I will play other Elder Scrolls games. 
if this is the only LP of mine you've watched, suffice to say, I love playing RPGs. I have a playthrough of really weird RPGs that this is not included in. Um, it's stuff like Off, Hylix, Omori, etc. Um, of just really fucking unusual games. Um, I like all the Halos, and I'm working through playing through all of them. I've been doing so chronologically, in fact. Uh, and coming up, you're going to see the next Halo game after I beat um, Halo 2 back in March. Um, yeah, I've been playing those all chronologically. I did another LP of Morrowind, attempted to, but it wasn't very good. Uh, I started an LP of Fallout New Vegas that I intend to return to. And coming up... Uh, oh, yeah, I also have a weekly show where I play um, roguelikes. Uh, and I've got a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so please. I'm sure that you will find another... Th if you've managed to get through all of these fucking things, I'm sure you'll manage to find another one of these that you enjoy. Um, and what's more... You know, you might just enjoy me, and that's fine, too. But yes, suffice to say, we are at the end of this leg of Galena Pitchblend's journey. And woof, I need a nap. <laughs> um, so thank you all for coming. Thank you all for staying all the way to the end, in fact. Uh, I'm all smiles, man. <laughs> Uh, I'm the Nerevarine, I am the Hortator, I am the true dreamer, and I am the savior and protector of Morrowind. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully. Um, and I hope you all have a good day. Uh, <laughs> Under sun and sky, we greet you warmly, Outlander. Three blessings.